All right, I want to do the uh, practice test uh, multiple choice. Okay, in a chemical reaction, A, the mass of the reactants equals the mass of the products. You know, that's conservation of mass and matter, so that sounds pretty good, but let's, uh, let's look at some of the other choices. The mass of the products is greater than the mass of the reactants. No, that makes no sense. Matter can't be created or destroyed. The number of atoms in the reactants and products must change. No, they have to stay the same. That's why you balance equations. And energy as heat must be added to the reactants. Not always. So A is definitely the answer. Uh, when a solid produced by chemical reaction separates from a solution, it is called, that's just um, understanding what the term precipitate is, it's different from uh, what we, what a weather person would call precipitate. We, we use it as a solid forming. When you mix two solutions and you see a solid form, that solid is the precipitate. Three, in writing a chemical equation that produces hydrogen gas, the correct representation of hydrogen gas is H2. H2, hydrogen is diatomic. Remember that um, as a part of a compound, it is H. But as um, a reactant or product, we have to write what the correct formula of hydrogen gas is. Um, recalling back to your Lewis uh, structures, hydrogen uh, is a molecular element, and it uh, shares an electron. And each hydrogen molecule has two hydrogen atoms, and that's hydrogen gas. Four, in a chemical equation, or a chemical equation is balanced when. The coefficients of the reactants equal the coefficients of the products. I, I don't think that makes any sense. Um, same number of each kind of atom appears in the reactants and products. That, that sounds pretty good. That sounds logical. Let's look at the other choices. Products and reactants are the same chemicals. No, otherwise it wouldn't be a chemical change. Um, Subscripts of the reactants equal the subscripts of the products. That makes no sense at all. So the same number and type of each atom, that's that's when you do your check to see if you're balanced. That's best choice. Uh, in an equation, the symbol for a substance in water uh, solution is followed by AQ. Aqueous means that it's dissolved in water. Remember, L is liquid, G is gas, and S is solid. So that's C. When it, the equation Fe3O4 plus Al forms Al2O3 plus Fe is balanced, what is the coefficient of the iron? Well, I remember um, helpful hints when balancing. Uh, Balance uncombined elements last, but here you have uncombined elements on both sides, so you're going to have an easy way to control. It's the oxygen atoms that you're going to have to balance first, because they're part of a compound on both sides. And you can see that you've got four on the reactant side and three on the product side. So you're going to need to find the least common multiple of three and four in order to balance the oxygen atoms. So the least common multiple of 3 and 4 is 12, okay, because they come in 4s on the left and they come in 3s on the right. So I'm going to multiply this coefficient by 3 and this coefficient by 4, and that way I've got 12 oxygens on either side. Now I can balance the uncombined elements on each side really easily. I have, um, so I have 12 O's on each side. I have 3 times 3, which is 9 irons on the left, so I'm going to need to put a 9 here, and I have 4 times 2, which is 8 aluminums on the product side, so I'm going to need to put an 8 here, okay, all right, so what is the coefficient of Fe? It is 9, all right, that's D. All right, next one. Okay, which coefficients correctly balance the formula uh, equation calcium 
oxide plus water forms calcium hydroxide. By the way, that is a synthesis type reaction because two small things makes one big thing. Okay, let's do an atom inventory to start. We've got one calcium here, we've got one calcium here. We've got one, two oxygens here, we've got two oxygens on the product side. And we've got two hydrogens on the reactant side. We need, and we have two on the product side. It's already balanced, so that's really nice. And the coefficients are going to be 1, 1, 1. D. All right. The complete balance equation for the reaction between zinc hydroxide and acetic acid, that's an acid plus base, Remember, a base is a metal hydroxide, and an acid is, well, something that ends in acid. Okay, it's hydrogen in the acetate ion. Okay, so um, the products are going to be a salt, zinc, or sorry, uh, zinc acetate, and water. So we need to look for zinc acetate and water on the right-hand side. Okay, so here's, we know that, this one has carbon dioxide, so that's not going to be a good choice. This one's got hydrogen and oxygen. That's not going to be a good choice. So the question is, which one of those is zinc acetate? And uh, and which one's you know balanced correctly? Which formulas are written correctly? So if you remember, uh, the acetate ion is minus 1, and the zinc ion is plus 2. Okay, so that means you need two acetate ions for every zinc, for every one zinc ion because, uh, to have in zinc acetate. And so that means that this side is written correctly. That's the, that's the formula of zinc acetate. This one here, let me do that in red, assumes that uh, zinc is plus one or acetate is minus two, either one, but it's not right. So the correct answer is C. Okay. All right. The reaction represented by the equation magnesium solid plus two hydrochloric acid forms hydrogen gas and magnesium chloride is a, and that's a single displacement reaction, right? It's an element. A metal and magnesium is replacing hydrogen. Okay, magnesium is higher on the activity series than uh, than hydrogen, and it can displace it from an acid. Okay, an active metal and a halogen react to form a salt. So an active metal, pick one high on the activity series, sodium. Get a halogen. Remember. It's uh, halogens are all diatomic as a as a reactant or product, and you're going to get a salt. Okay. And remember, a salt is just an ionic compound. When a slightly soluble compound is produced in a double displacement reaction, a precipitate is formed. Remember, insoluble, slightly soluble. That really means insoluble. All compounds dissolve a little bit. But that slightly soluble means it's not that soluble. It's That a, means a precipitate's form. When potassium reacts with water, one product formed is, well, this is an alkali metal. Alkali metals are at the top of the activity series, and they can displace hydrogen from even water. So you're going to get hydrogen gas and potassium hydroxide. Okay, and when it's balanced, you'll have, uh, let's see, you got three here, you got two, two, and a two, okay, and hydrogen gas. All right, so look at the activity series, you'll see potassium is right at the top, um, and it can displace hydrogen from even water. Remember, the most active metals can displace hydrogen from water. Then 
uh, the next tier can displace hydrogen from acids, and then um, lesser ones don't displace hydrogen at all. Okay. Let's see. 13. What can be predicted by using an activity series? That would be uh, whether or not a certain chemical reaction will occur. Remember, we use these for single replacements. Or single displacements. So that's A. I wish that, that little thing would go away. Which reaction does not occur? HF, hydrofluoric acid, plus chlorine, forms fluorine plus HCl. We have to use our activity series of halogens. All of these look like they're, um, well, this one's a halogen replacement. So if we look at this one, we have to know our activity series of halogens, which is the same order in which they are on the table. Fluorine's the most reactive and iodine's not. So remember, the activity series says that anyone that's higher as an element will displace one from a compound that's lower. The higher that on the activity series, the more likely it is to be part of a compound rather than uncombined. Okay, so the question is, which is higher, F or Cl? F is higher. That means F can be, will stay part of a compound, and that's the reaction that does not occur. Okay, so that's going to be the answer. That one doesn't occur. Let's just make sure the other ones. B is an uh, activity series of metals. Sodium is higher on the metal activity series than zinc, so sodium can displace zinc from fluoride, and so that reaction's okay. And same with iron is higher on the activity series than copper, so that reaction will occur. And magnesium is higher on the activity series than hydrogen. It can displace hydrogen from an acid, which is hydrochloric acid there. So um, the reaction that occurs that doesn't occur is the first one. Which of the following represents a halogen displacement reaction? Now you're looking for a halogen uncombined on the left side and then in replacing another halogen. Okay, so I, I only see like a halogen right here in A. And chlorine is higher on the halogen activity series than bromine. That means chlorine will displace bromide, and it does. And bromine, gas, uh, bromine liquid is given off, so that's A. Um, which of the following represents a precipitation reaction? Well, look for a solid on the right side and look for a double replacement reaction. Okay, here, here this looks pretty good um, as, a, as a starting point. I don't see this has got a solid on it, but... That, that's a starting with a solid, okay? So that's not really a precipitation reaction. Um, the other one's aqueous gas, liquid aqueous. Okay, this is a double replacement reaction right here. Okay. Calcium bromide plus sulfuric acid forms calcium sulfate solid plus 2HBr. That's a precipitation reaction. Okay. Based on the solubility rules, which of the following should be soluble in water? Um, one of the first solubility rules is um, all alkali metal salts are soluble. So group one salts are all soluble. Okay, and that's potassium sulfate. Most sulfates are not soluble. Okay, um, which of the following represents a combustion reaction? Remember, a hydrocarbon plus oxygen forms CO2 plus water. That's a combustion reaction. Okay, uh, B is a uh, acid base, double replacement. That's lithium hydroxide, metal hydroxide is a base, and nitric acid. This is a synthesis. or combination. This is a single replacement 
and this is a single replacement. Okay. Based, uh, 19. Based on the solubility rules, which of the following compounds should be insoluble in water? Okay, so carbonates are mostly insoluble except for group 1 in ammonium. So, uh, all nitrates are soluble. That's soluble. Uh, all group 1 salts are soluble. That's soluble. All group 1 salts are soluble. That's soluble. All ammonium salts are soluble. That's soluble. Calcium carbonate, limestone, chalk, insoluble. Okay, on the A's on this practice test. All right, which of the following represents an acid-base neutralization reaction? Okay, look for a metal hydroxide on the left-hand side, okay, and a acid, which is kind of like H plus with one of the anions. So, aluminum, metal, and sulfuric acid, that's single replacement or single displacement. This is synthesis. Okay, here's a metal hydroxide. Here's an acid. Forms a salt, lithium nitrate plus water. That's looking to me like an acid base neutralization. Um, this one is single replacement. This one is a double replacement. It's got an acid here, but no base here. Okay, and it forms a solid precipitate. So. The acid-base neutralization is acid plus base forms salt plus water. That is the end of the multiple choice practice.